Hello, everybody. This is Damon Vorce, the director of the Lee Library. And today we're sitting with Lauren Nazaroff, our youth services librarian and local author, Liz Cogswell. And we're going to be discussing Exploring the Holidays, her new book. Hi, Liz. Hi, Thanks Lauren. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. OK, so um, let's get started. And you can tell us a little bit about your story. All right. Well, my story started quite a while ago. Um, Back in uh, elementary school, I just drew all the time. And uh, in high school, I started um, selling I, I selling my portraits. I, I would do portraits, and they'd hang in the school, and they'd be like, oh, can you do a portrait of my mother, my sister, whatever. And um, so I started selling portraits in high school. Um, cut to a few years later, I moved to Lee with my husband. and um, I left him with the kids on a weekend and went up to Highland Farm, set up an easel, and um, started painting a giant picture of Highland Farm, actually, the first one I'd done in, in years. And people saw me doing it. People that worked there um, were so nice, and uh, they wanted co a copy, you, you know, for, for their family, for their house, for their, you know, friends. So I ended up doing many, many copies of Highland Farm and selling them, which was good because, you know, money was kind of tight back then. And, um, and that's kind of how I got started as an artist. Um, so, yeah, after doing a bunch of them, I started doing prints because they were, you know, it was easier to sell prints. I wasn't up there painting the same thing over and over because that's not as much fun when it's work. It's not as much fun um, to paint, yeah. you know. Um, so then years passed and, um, I went with a friend to a farm in Lee, a sheep farm, and I was absolutely, I fell in love with farming and sheep and the whole process and I'd never seen anything like it. So I would sketch, I, I did all these, um, sketches of the farm, uh, you know, the sheep in the fields the um the sheep in the in the barns i was just um, amazed and i was really taken by the fact that they were sh the, the wool was sheared off and made into yarn and i thought do people know that this this is how yarn is made do kids know where yarn comes from so um i took all the sketches that i had made of the farm and i decided to put them in a little booklet a little book and I, it's called A Lamb's Life, A Year in the Life of a Lamb on a Farm. And I um, put it all together, wrote a simple story. It's, it's um, not, not really a story about a lamb. It's really where yarn comes from. And I um, had my friend who is the farmer make sure that it was all right. And, and I decided to get it printed here in, in Berkshire County at some quality printing. and. Um, then I distributed it to uh, farm museums and um, like Plymouth Plantation and Shaker Village and the American Textile Museum and the Farmers Museum out in New York. And, um, and then some of my kids' teachers heard that I had done it and had me come in and do presentations at the school. I went up to Lee Elementary and um, read the book and uh, brought my spinning wheel and talked a little bit about um, where yarn comes from to the kids for years up in the schools. And um, it was really nice to, to t educate, to teach. I wasn't a teacher, so it was fun to have that role yeah. with kids. That sounds amazing. Can you walk us through starting out as an artist and kind of turning that into these stories? Well, I think um, they they were so organic, you know, from from the um, the first book, which is just kind of a basic book, to one of the stories that the farmer told me, a lamb's life Easter story, is a, a true to life story about um, one of the lambs on the farm named Palm, and uh, it was, she was such a sweet um, sweet sheep. Uh, so I ended up actually helping out at the farm every year with shearing. I would go and my job would be to do what's called skirting. So after he would take the, um, the fleece off of the sheep, it would come off in one giant 
blanket almost and they pick it up and they throw it on a table and I would pick up pick off all the you know kind of icky bits and the hay and clean it up it would get bagged up and sent to make yarn and um, and through through being at the farm the sheep farm and helping out and um, you know being near the sheep and the, the other animals I, I don't know I guess it was just love at first sight so those came kind of organically and and then later on um, during the pandemic, really, um, I, I felt like my friends and family were a little sad. I needed cheering up. So um, so I did this, um, I made an advent calendar. I, I painted a picture and then put a, a bunch of numbers on and figured out where I wanted to put things behind it. And, and th then I cut one up and I figured out where on the back all those should go. Uh, I cut the doors with an exacto knife and I glued them together and I sent it out to my friends and family instead of a Christmas card. It's beautiful. So to cheer them up, this is all like just me trying to cheer up my friends and family. I sent out 80, which is, seems like a lot, but I have a lot. I have a very big family. My husband has a big family. So, um, I, I just kind of developed these little characters and somebody said, oh, that reminds me of the Richard Scary books from when we were kids. And I thought, oh, I had a giant Richard Scary book as a child that I read every day. Great big book of everything, I think it was called. And it was all the Richard Scary books together. And it was like a big volume. And it was always on my floor as a kid, spread out on some page. So. I mean, you can see Richard Scarry was a huge influence, and I didn't even know, you know, but animals with little clothes on, yeah. I mean, that's his, that's his wheelhouse. So through the pandemic um, and after, people wouldn't let me stop. <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to, you know, get for an advent calendar this year? Um, so I started selling them. As you can see, I sometimes incorporate Shaker Village. Um, I ended up selling some at Shaker Village too. Um, they're really good about selling everything I give them, which is nice. And so after a few years, I'm like, oh, I love these little characters. I wonder what they would be doing at Easter. I wonder what they would be doing um, on Thanksgiving. So that's where this new book came from, Exploring the Holidays, came from the love of the little characters that I made with the... Um, with the advent calendars to cheer up my family and friends. So um, so I decided, you know, this is what they do on Valentine's Day. This is what they do on Labor Day and 4th of July. Of course, it's me watching my sister's the boat parade at my sister's house, eating a hot dog with my family. You know, they're all me. It's it's different versions of my family. And it's just beautiful. Um, so. Yeah, I love the, um, my favorite is the Martin Luther King Jr. Day, actually. I I took a long time trying to figure out how to um, talk about Martin Luther King um, with young children and, and make it a starting off point, a jumping off point mm -hmm. for deeper discussions. Um, do you want to read that insert? Um, do I want to read, read it now? Yeah, yeah sure. Um, in school, we learn about Martin Luther King Jr. Day. This holiday in January reminds us how important it is to treat everyone with kindness, respect, and equality. And then it has things on each page, a picture of what you need to find. There are usually four or five of them because I have a couple of nephews that have dyslexia and I wanted to make sure that they could also use the book on their own. And, and if you think about a two or three year old, they don't know how to read yet. So if they have clues of what they're going to find, then they can use the book without their parent around. That's so inclusive. Okay. So, and, then, um, and then I also put an advanced seek and find on each page, and that's for the kids that my, you know, my niece has older kids that are seven, eight years old, so they don't get bored with it either. There's harder things on each page for them to find. So uh, everything has happened one thing led to another, led to another, but the town of Lee really, um, 
it's very big in my story. It's a big deal that I'd go, I'd go to a farm and people in Lee would be like, oh, I love that. And then I, and then I started painting pictures of the, the school, um, that's Lee Elementary School. And then the, the teachers were like, oh, we want one when we retire. And then that happened to that thing. And I've done the firehouse and so many people's homes. I can't even remember how many, but it, it helped me to finance, you know, my, my life. And I don't know, the people in Lee are great. I love living here. It's a, it's a great town. I spend so much time in this youth library. Uh, both with my own kids and one of my friend's kids. It's a great town. It's a great library. Um, yeah, I love Lee. <laughs> so how did you make it to Lee in, in the Berkshires? You know, we I grew up in Pittsfield, and I um, I wanted maybe just a little bit of a smaller community. Pittsfield is a really big town. And so we were looking in the surrounding areas, and a house happened to be open right down the road. And I thought, I can walk to town. This is great. And I do all the time. I walk to town 20, 30 years later all the time. I love it here, even in the yeah, winter. Such a great place Isn't to be. It? Yeah. Yeah. It's a place to be. That's it is. Nice. It is. It's a great place. Yeah. yeah I love it here. So um, what would you, what advice would you give to someone, maybe kids who mm. are really into you know painting or they are artists mm -hmm. and they want to kind of maybe create or mm. put stories behind their art like you did yeah yeah that's a great question i i would say just keep creating because um you know i was doing um like these canvases are only a, a buck a piece and i thought i don't want to i've never done this before i don't want to waste money on something that might not turn out great. So I thought, well, a dollar and some paints is an okay investment for anybody. Um, so I tried them, a couple of them turned out not as good, other ones are better. And then I wouldn't, you know, if, if I had gone to, to a big expensive canvas, it would have been as even an older person, a young person, a starting out, somebody who has been painting for a while, it's a little intimidating mm -hmm. to have a big canvas and go, what do I do with that? Um, but these little dollar store, I mean, the, the Michael's dollar canvases, you know, you can just throw it out if it's no good mm -hmm. or you can keep it. And now my walls are full of animals <laughs> and I sold quite a few at Shaker Village. Um, they're, they're really good to me. Um, so yeah, it turned out okay. So just try it get things together like I wouldn't have even thought about I grew up with advent calendars I think quite a few of us did um, some of them had chocolate in them remember <laughs> um, but uh, we always had advent calendars in our house but the fun of opening a door I mean that's just fun some of these books here have little flaps mm -hmm. that you open each page you know interactive element is very great I think it is your story yeah it's a great I love the um I love the, the feeling of opening a door and and in each of the little doors I try to create a whole story because the ones that I had a, as a kid it was like there was a little present in there or a little piece of mistletoe or it was kind of boring you know so I'm like I don't want my advent calendars to be boring so I want them to be fun yeah so so I try to create as much, I, ch I, I cram as much detail in these little, and even just figuring out where to put the, the doors. That's kind of fun to go from a painting and you go, well, where, where should I put a door? It would make maybe make sense in this blank spot or down here. And I made some mistakes and I had to close them and figure out cut it out, paste it in a different spot and figure out the mistakes are just, uh, I think opportunities to learn. And when you paint and make mistakes, you can, you can just get a fresh piece of paper or a fresh, you know, canvas for a dollar and just keep trying. Yeah. That's really great. Um, 
Can you talk a little bit more about the um, publishing process? So you had your ideas, you had your beautiful artwork, and then how do I get that all together? Yeah, yeah. That, that's um, a really, people ask me that a lot because everybody has ideas for children's books. It's such a fun venue to, to you know, it's a, a great way to get your information, your idea, your story across. And for me, it was almost like I was writing this for my family and friends' children, my children, my nieces, my, yeah, when they were younger, now my nieces and nephews' children. Um, so I'm always thinking, well, let me put a little something together for the our family and friends. But I'll do some extra so I can sell some to make the money back for my project. So these are just projects. This is just, this was just a project that I thought, oh, well, wouldn't this be fun to put out there? So I didn't go to a publisher or get myself a, a book agent. I'm planning on doing that, but I haven't, I didn't do them because for me, these were, um, I thought, well, the, They'll just be of interest to the people I know. A little more personable, like personal. Right, but they, but then they had, I, I guess awesome. they, they have value other than just, um, yeah, just people I know. So, um, yeah, so that's that's how it came about. They were just little projects that I got some money together. I saved some money, financed the printing of it figured out how many I had to sell to, for, you know, for a price to get the money back. But mainly I just wanted to give it to my nieces and nephews. And now I have a grandchild. And so, so yeah, that's, that's how, exciting. yeah. So, so did you send your prints into the um, printing company or? Well, I really wanted to know how to do the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm kind so of... So you really dove into like so, how to make this. Right. So I um, got a program on a computer. I taught myself how to use it. I did all the, um, the editing. Like I figured out what picture, what backgrounds, what fonts to use, where to put the lettering. Um, I really wanted to know how to put a book together. You don't have to do that. There are people that will do that for you. If that's too much, that's too intimidating, and you want to put together a book, you can find somebody who knows how to do all this. But I, I wanted to pick out the background. I love plaids. I wanted to use really interesting backgrounds. I wanted to coordinate with the colors in the picture. Um, you can tell on my first book, the fonts, is very small here but it would be maybe bigger on a different page i wasn't th this is my first attempt so it's got a little there's got it's, there's little things in it that you can tell this is not you know somebody is seasoned doing it and and i got better on the second book and better in the third book and yeah that's it was um so I went to a place called, I think it's called Qual Prints now, but quality printing when I first did my first book in Pittsfield. I had it all on a zip drive this big. And I said, I made a book. This is my book. Can you print it out? They were great. They printed out the pages, brought me in, said, does everything look all right? How are the colors? Do you want anything changed? And then it was going to be printed on this giant machine to take us all takes up a whole room so they brought me back and I met all of the people and got to see it printed it was such an exciting day and then when I first got the book it was like oh my gosh look at my, my idea and my sketches from the farm came out in a book and it was really fun and, and this was oh 15 years ago probably that this and I only have a few copies left so um, it was a pretty good project and that's how they came about. Each time I had to relearn how to use the program because this was seven years later and I completely forgot everything I did. It was gone, <laughs> it was gone out of my head. Yeah. So I had to teach myself again how to edit and um, with, you know, put, put the words where I wanted them to be. And um, the painting part was, was stuff I knew about, but the rest of it, it was just a challenge but 
the challenge is the fun part, right? The journey that we're on, the journey to create something, that's the fun part. The, the end result is good too, but really the, the journey that you're on to create whatever you have in your mind, whether it's a new job that you see yourself doing or um, a, you know, a artwork, or maybe it's a poem, or maybe it's um, a video, or maybe it's um, a redesign for something, or some people love to decorate their house. Some people love to, um, they're really into cars and they, they want, you know, to look around and find just the perfect car. You know, you're creating all of life as a creation and um, figuring out what you want to see and how you want to do it. That's the, that's the fun part to me. That's the fun. Yeah. Yeah. The you creating. Such an amazing story. Thank you. That's nice of you. You created all these beautiful things and then thanks. You wanted to be able to share that with the people you love mm. and then the world fell in love with the stuff you created. Thanks. Yeah. For sharing it with everyone. Yeah. Where do you see yourself in your journey going in the future? Well, I, I, I kind of think that this book has um, some, com some more commercial value. Um, I, I see it kind of getting outside of just my little printed copy. So I am going to get a, a try to find a book editor, somebody that um, I can work with and, and see if it can't go to someplace like um, you know, Scholastic or some of the other. Um, uh, I would like to see it go out in the world. The, this book especially um, has meaning to me because it's about the holidays, but what it really is about is um, acceptance and tolerance for other people's beliefs that might be different from yours. That's what underlies every page. This might be what your Thanksgiving looks like, but it, it might not be, and that's okay. You might celebrate Christmas, or you might celebrate Hanukkah, and, and that's okay if you do or don't. And um, you know, several times very subtly in the book, it'll talk about your, your holiday might look different from this, mm -hmm. and that's okay. Um, your friend's holiday might look different from this, and that's okay. So, so I see it has a bigger implication. Plus, I love um, Earth Day. This is um, one of my favorites because I just love the Earth. And um, I, this is me. I pick up garbage about once a month uh, from my neighborhood. I have the cleanest neighborhood in Lee because I walk my dog and I pick up my garbage. And um, we, we just, my passion for taking care of the Earth seeped into this page, you know, recycling and, and picking up trash and I don't know. So, yeah. I love that. You definitely talked about how you and your family are kind of throughout this entire book. Oh, yeah, for um, sure. So where are you selling this book currently? So right now um, it's on Etsy, which is a, a great site that, you know, really promotes artists and their creations. Um, you can build something, make something, sell it on Etsy, and it doesn't have to go through anybody else. Um, so um, that's been fun. That's been fun to just be the person to send it to. I don't know, somebody in Indiana um, bought a bunch of advent calendars the other day, and I thought, well, that's interesting. It's Christmas was, you know, they're planners. <laughs> yeah, they're planners. <laughs> yeah. So um, that's fun to be um, connected with people that way. Also, like I said, Shaker Village um, has all my books, all my advent calendars, sometimes a couple of um, these little square, uh, these little square guys here. Um, uh, I still sell books at Plymouth Plantation and the Farmer's Museum in Cooperstown. So they have some books as well, but I think, and I, I was on Amazon for a while. Um, so I think, you know, that I'll just, I just continue to, to try to sell to whoever thinks it's a good fit for what they're selling. Um, so, yeah. 
where else? That's about it. Oh, the Berkshire Museum. So I had a tree. I was so much fun. So this book just came out in the fall. So I thought, what could be a fun thing to tie in to this book? And the Berkshire Museum was starting up their Festival of Trees again, mm -hmm. which I'm a fan of that. Um, so I thought, well, why don't I do a big quirky tree? So I did. I, I had this big old tree and I did a seek and find. So, um, so I put pictures of the book. I also, you know, hung pictures of the book on the tree and then a giant list of things for kids to find. And then I spray painted them all silver and hung them around the tree. So the kids would be able to say, oh, a pumpkin. And then, I, you know, they have to find a big silver pumpkin and oh, a horse. And so it was interactive like the book, mm -hmm. like the advent calendars. It was like, a, you don't just look at it and go, oh, that's a pretty tree. It wasn't very pretty. It was kind of crazy looking because it had pumpkins and horses and cows and all things hung on it that you wouldn't normally big things. So, um, so yeah, that was fun. So I had the, uh, the book at the um, gift shop at the Festival of Trees. And they said, oh, well, we, you know, we still have it. Let's, let's keep it in the gift shop. So the Berkshire Museum was also kind enough to, um, to keep selling the book, which is great. Um, so yeah, that was, that was a kind of a fun kickoff. And right next to our tree was the Lee Town tree. Um, so I got to see, um, it's, it's really great because the pictures, historic pictures of Lee all over it. And at the top, it had the, um, iconic um, church spire uh, steeple. Mm -hmm. um, somebody had made a replica of it and put it on top. Uh, so I got to meet some friends from Lee and I saw the, um, the librarian and um, yeah, so that was kind of fun. That's how I got to be here, um, being next to the Lee tree. They did a great job. That was also very informative. I love that when the when the trees can be more than just, you know, balls and ribbons, but they can have real interesting information. Yeah. So and stories and personalities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that. great. Yeah. So is there anything else that you um, want to talk about or tell us mm -hmm. something you want to say to your viewers, maybe the young viewers? Well, I think probably it would just be to keep going towards your dreams and practice 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 if you're if you want to draw uh practice drawing if you want to paint um i i just got myself a old watercolor set where all the colors and painted i didn't buy a huge professional set i still use the same watercolor set that was a family member's actually wasn't even mine i still use that same one um so just keep practicing keep keep drawing keep sketching um keep trying new things try to do a painting that has a door that you can open up and see something else um don't give up if something doesn't work out i, I also thought that if i was um drawing something, I should know in my head exactly what it looks like. So then I'd go to draw a horse and I'd be like, that's not quite right. So drawing from photos and from life is a, makes a big difference because then you can see all the tiny details of where, for example, that's a vein in, in a cow. I would never have known was there, but they're normal. All the cows have them. And without it, it's, it's a little less realistic. And right there, you know, that's something I added because I was looking at a cow and I added what I saw. So don't be afraid to look at photos, even photos on a computer or your phone or um, Pinterest has so many. If you put in um, sheep in Pinterest, uh, you'll come up with a whole bunch of pictures of sheep and why not sketch out one of the pictures from there? Don't make it harder on yourself thinking that you should remember exactly how something looks like an elephant. There are so many more wrinkles and places and the feet are really interesting looking, but 
you're not going to remember all that from just seeing an elephant a few years ago. Find some pictures of elephants and then try it. And um, don't give up and don't forget that the process of painting or drawing or poetry or writing is the best part. The best part. Don't hurry it to the ending of whatever you're doing. Really look at what you're doing and how you're spending your time and enjoy it. Enjoy it. Life is supposed to be a joy, joyful. It's a gift. I agree. Well, Liz, thank you so much for coming and sharing your you. amazing story. I think that your art and your stories have such an interactive like point to them. Thank I think you. it's so great for so many ages. And I'm really excited that I got to hear your story today. Thank you. So thank you for coming. Thank you for asking me. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.